decides it's going to be about and as is typical uh chris and i generally ignore the topic dance around it try not to answer direct questions uh and then frantically finish with questions we just say thursday around these parts we're glad you're with us you can find us on the internet binarygenus.us on the twitter uh you know our twitter links are at the website because i don't know what they are allison chris and i'm gary happy to have you It was so succinct. I don't have anything to add. (laughs) Usually I forget the website and I get distracted, but I'm focused today. Maybe. It's your lucky piece of driftwood. That's why. Oh, there's this little, see that little weird ceramic baby over there? (laughs) Yes. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, there's no point to it. I was just on a call the other day and someone was like, what's with the fat fish baby? (laughs) You should construct some sort of tale about. It. Can can we well, see? Can we see the baby uh, closer? Close. Up? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It was a gift from a friend uh, in China. Uh, but is it a? Okay. 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 It's, a, it's a baby okay. holding a toy. It's like yeah, it a like a Buddha and... baby. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's know. much less much less weird than than it possibly looked from a distance. Yeah, from I have, a distance, it definitely looked creepier yeah, to me. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so y'all know, but our listeners may not know that I uh, am officially a published D and D author now. Yay! Uh, this is and rad. I so I have an adventure that I wrote as part of the RPG Writers Workshop last month, uh, which is called the Haunted Circus. It's about a traveling circus that finds themselves haunted by ghosts and other things and uh one of the characters i have a whole crap ton of characters uh that i wrote like backstories for and all sorts of shit um and one of the characters is a shopkeeper at the circus and she specializes in like weird kind of creepy toys uh Mm. dolls in particular but she also has like other sorts of toys and the way that her shop is described is that she has arranged all of her toys to depict like um like panoramas of like gruesome like attacks and like horrible like traumatizing scenes like all like the toy soldiers are all like murdering someone or whatever and all the all the dolls she has dolls lining the walls and all the dolls um all seem like they're watching you wherever you go uh, and this is a feeling that persists. So, like, it, so, like, if you purchase one of the the dolls, then you take it with you. Then you constantly feel like you have eyes on on you. Um, and so, uh, that's horrifyingly cool. <laughs> so, your doll, uh, your <laughs> was was your ceramic doll was was making me think of of that particular character and, and those creepy dolls. And actually, uh, what's what's um, awesome about that is, um, so we were play testing just the four of us, uh, our family. I was have been playtesting this game, and last week uh, my daughter bought no, she stole one of the dolls. Her character stole one of the dolls. I feel and like then, that's even worse than the doll. It's, world. it's yeah. I mean, it, I, better or worse? I don't know. Um, anyway, uh, she stole it, and then she was creeped out by the fact that she constantly felt like she was being watched, and so she uh, was going to drop it off uh, inside the circus tent before the circus started uh, for that night, where there have been attacks and like ghosts and hauntings and zombies and things. Uh, and and actually that becomes a, like both her uh, entering the tent to do that and also uh, and like she's a, she's a rogue so she's sort of stealthed in and she made had a really good rose and so she was successful in her, her stealthiness uh, and so both having the doll in there and her going in there itself has opened the door to having a lot more information about what's going on that they would not have gone so it, so it's a good plot point a plot device if you will uh, and uh, yeah, that's all I have to say about that but dolls. if you do notice that like things are missing or being moved around, I would look at the baby first. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Definitely keep your eye on that baby. <laughs> I, maybe I should like have it closer to the front door. Then it's like you want. Uh, you always place. want your feet facing towards the door. It's kind of that. 
that vibe. Like you Wait. don't want your bed to be facing the other way. You always <laughs> want your feet facing towards the door? You're no, is that just me? <laughs> you don't want, you want to be able to see if the door opens or like, no? <laughs> Does that, well, maybe, I mean, maybe we're thinking the same thing because I sleep on my side, but I tend to face the door when I'm sleeping on my side. Well, that's probably like your caveman self, like being prepared for an attack. In college, I I normally sleep on my side, but the side that I sleep on is the ear that I can hear out of. Oh. If I sleep on the other the other side, um, and like Aaron that's tries to talk to me, then <laughs> like, then like if this if this ear is against the pillow and this is the one that's yeah. exposed, that's the bad ear. That's the one that. <laughs> That's the this one also that had, makes sense uh, the ear because, like, wait, wait, to, time to out. hear an attack, Chris. you would need that good ear uh, up. That's true. Lower your camera. Lower Show my shirt. camera. Oh, okay. It took it took me a minute. This shirt is so amazing. So good. Yeah, I love it. Okay, thank you. I needed that. <laughs> you need. I, I caught the top for of it, and it just took a minute. For listeners, my T-shirt depicts uh, the Princess Leia with Ziggy Stardust uh, makeup all across her face. And uh, in sort of David Bowie, Ziggy Stardust style uh, font, it says Rebel Rebel. That's, so that's cool. the accessibility note for people not watching. Yeah, that's a good idea. I'm glad you did that. Um, I like that collision on a t-shirt. I do too. Yes, it's, I, I'm quite fond of, of the shirt. I, only I mean, I only wish it was a ringer tee. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 my t-shirt size varies between small and medium depending on like the manufacturer of the t-shirt and so sometimes I err on the small side and sometimes I err on the medium side because I don't know uh and this t-shirt when I got it I assumed that I would be small and in fact I am medium in this particular t-shirt size so I I love this shirt but it's also a little small which makes me love it like slightly less like I would like it if it was a little bit bigger but I don't want to go back and get another one before we get to the topic I need a judgment call from you all. I'm about to say something snarky, not to you, but at work. Okay. I don't know if you've, it's a, it's politically uh, related. So uh, on Friday, the uh, president declared a tax uh, deferral, right? Until the end of the year. Um, and so someone in the like staff- the president, asked president. It. Sorry, I thought you were talking about like your company. No. What? I don't think we have somebody with the title president. I don't know. Yeah, I didn't. <laughs> Sorry, I, I'm new here. <laughs> yeah, like as in, yeah, and you, you don't need to file your taxes this year or something. No, 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 no. Uh, withholding, uh, Social Security withholding. In your oh, great! Yeah, well. great, awesome, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Uh, totally not legal. Not the bounds of the Constitution. So someone asked, uh, "Doesn't the Constitution say Congress has a sole power to tax?" And someone said, "That's everything I've heard as well." <laughs> and I want to say, wait, 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 wait. I'm a public school student here. Tell me a little more about this Constitution thing. Is this new? <laughs> but I also feel like I'm just like poking the, I'm not going to do it. I'm poking in the beehive for no reason. Like, fine, have your conversation, whatever. I... Yeah, I would vote no. It's tempting, but it doesn't really amount to much. No, it doesn't. And it just, it starts a conversation that I don't need in my life. Yeah, see, if you don't want the follow-up, then, then don't do it. <laughs> yeah, I have to do some work sometime this afternoon. And this could definitely be a. Um, yeah, it's um, easy to say things in text and have. Uh, yeah. Your the voice like it would like if you said that in person. It would land differently than saying it in text, and I was reminded of this concept uh, yesterday. Mm. Uh, because we have, we've been having a whole bunch of people, uh, leave, uh, at our company. And, uh, the most recent one was, uh, Monday, announced Monday. Uh, and this is somebody that I have, you know, is, is in the Americas, from America, is currently living in Toronto, uh, along with you, Allison. Not, not with you. He's not. He's not there. I don't expect him to like pop up out Wait, of the slow down. Slow down. Going way too quickly for me. We all live in like a big commune. Yeah, I mean everybody. Okay. Everybody. That's actually how I had Toronto in my head for what's yeah. worth. So that that doesn't surprise Toronto, me. Toronto, I'm sure, is a big fantastic. city, but like everybody, like I know who lives in it's Canada, really basically great. lives in Toronto. So I just imagine like Toronto is like five people. It's, it's like, all just, it's like, like over the city. 
So you all can, the like, tech outside people of your, are just... Um, like, anyway. are still in the same building. Yeah. Anyway, he's the leaving, jackets. and, like, he... <laughs> He has introduced himself, and we've had uh, joking conversations about how he is an asshole. Uh, so I said on his post, because there's been a lot of these types of farewell posts, and it's really depressing, and people are starting to get really affected, like, hey, you know, like, sorry to see you go, I hope, wish you good luck, whatever, blah, 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 blah. When I first met you, you were, I thought you were an asshole. I still think you're an asshole, but I think you're actually a decent human being, uh, which is probably better. Uh, and then... Yesterday morning, uh, Tom, who, you know, is a very nice person and a very great human being, also the CEO of the company, uh, <laughs> messages me and says, um, so I'm not really sure if your post on, on that farewell post was a joke or not. And that was like, shit. Record scratch. You're like, damn it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> You might wonder so, how I got here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, Chris. That sucks, dude. Yeah, no, I, I, I mean, I told him, like, I appreciate, like, I, I, I would rather you call me out on, that, on my shit uh, and so I can, like, be more conscious of that, of that stuff than, um, than not calling me out on my shit. Um, and he wasn't, like, upset about it. He was, like, concerned that people uh, might, he said he assumed it was a joke, but he wasn't a hundred percent sure and he said he asked the person in question and they weren't a hundred percent sure and he was concerned that if people did not know that there is this sort of like banter um or people new to the company who maybe hadn't even met him yet uh which is very possible because we haven't had a retreat in like you know more than a year now because we're we canceled it um yeah, that they might not get the context either and especially when you're thinking like like English is not the first language for a lot of our employees either. So clarification might have, might be needed. So I, I followed up. So it turns out I'm the asshole. asshole. <laughs> yes. That is how it in fact turns out. So there you go. Uh, the lesson of the story is that language is hard and that boy, when you're it. saying something uh, in a group with, a, with, a, with people, it may land differently uh, when there's facial expressions and there's body language and that sort of thing, then it would if it is exclusively in text. Um, and I didn't have any emojis. Maybe emojis would have helped. Probably emojis would have helped. That's that's another like sub lesson. Like fucking use emojis to com <laughs> convey like body language or facial expression or meaning because we got nothing else when we're doing just exclusively. The text. other thing to take away from this is. Um... Just don't call post. people an asshole, maybe. That might be a good thing <laughs> that, to take away. In a public forum. Oh, no. I was going to say, I can post, boy, that guy's an asshole. LOL, JK. And fine. I feel like it's just healthy to steer, steer clear of... Call people assholes? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's uh, probably a, a, safe, uh, a safe bet right there. Yeah. So the, so the subtext is you're hiring. Um, no, actually. I mean, we're hiring for sales positions. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we're, we're not quite sure how this COVID thing is going to turn out. Uh, so we have a hiring freeze except for, for sales, which we need a whole sales team. Yeah. Because that's part of who's leaving, like the entire sales team. Sales team. Yeah. Sales is one of those positions, though, that you expect turnover in is it i don't know we've never had a sales yeah. team before <laughs> like yeah we, sales, we built the either. sales team from like the ground up like by pulling people from different roles and like smushing together them together and saying okay your your sales and marketing uh go do things and they all took that on and they did that thing uh and none of them were like hired as sales people um and that and we didn't have like a head of sales or anything like, I mean, we moved somebody into that position, but it wasn't like somebody with a sales background. Um, and that's part of the reason why we're just like from, from the ground up, like building a new sales team, because obviously there is a problem in that concept of like, just kind of pulling people around um, and, and having an actual sales team is probably going to be a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that the the flip to that, I 
to totally hijack this conversation today <laughs> is um or the intent of this conversation today is that like sales is the first uh, representation that your clients have with the company yep. so if sales is not totally aligned with the culture top to bottom you may have misaligned client expectations from from experience uh and i don't mean like in, in things like sprint length and things like you know deliverables but even just general attitude hey yeah. we call people assholes around here like that's i mean i say that flippantly but i mean that's a thing like we our communication is very informal and that's you know there are well, my communication is informal everyone else's is probably fine <laughs> oh well yeah i don't know i mean there's i i I mean, obviously, we don't just, call people a, assholes, hangout, and that's why and the CEO like, of the company yeah. was telling me that, like, like, are you joking or? Yeah. yeah. Well, do you have an HR department? We have an HR person. Well, and it was better the CEO was messaging you than the HR person, so probably <laughs> true. Yeah. 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 Anyway, the show is about work. Something. <laughs> it's not about work. Ooh, work. <laughs> Yeah, I I don't know. I'm kind of fine with work. I took yesterday off, so maybe that's part of it. <laughs> You're like I'm fancy free. This is great. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so I've got like an hour of it in today and then <laughs> yesterday. That's well, the mind. topic for this week is really random. You probably yeah. won't ever use it again <laughs> in your day to day, but here we go. It's Gabelle. Gabelle. G A B E L L E. I feel like this is an instrument for measuring something. Like a tool for measuring something. Oh, like the actual tool, not like, oh, that's five Gabelles. <laughs> um, no, I think like pass me the Gabelle. I need to see how uh, something that pass building me is. The gabelle. <laughs> yeah. Or do you have the Gabelle in your trunk or is it in mine? I'm not even sure how big it is. That's a problem. Like, I'm not sure if it's a handheld device or if it, you have to use like jack stands to hold it up. I suspect it has something to do with um, uh, percentage of elevation change. Incline. That's the word I'm looking for. Uh, the first thing that came to my mind uh, when you said Gabelle was, wait a second. Isn't there like a singer named that? And of course, I was thinking of Patty LaBelle. <laughs> I think you were saying, is, of course, I was thinking of Adele. Which is different. <laughs> which would have been much better. Than Patty Gabelle. Yeah. It's that would be a pretty... different person. Maybe I'll uh, say uh... Clark Gabelle. <laughs> yeah, Clark <It's> a... Gabelle. <laughs> Maybe it's a tribute band. <laughs> Or, or as as Gary suggested, just Gabel. Just <laughs> yeah, but I yeah that that's a little bit further. That's one step further away from Adele because you're you're changing two things as opposed to just one thing. Yeah, that's the problem. With that. Yeah, that's the problem. <laughs> um. I mean, I know you're wrong, Gary, uh, about it being well, that's some sort of, of tool of measurement. Um, I, I'm not, I'm not, I, I, your, your argument is, is convincing. Uh, hand, hand me the Gabelle hey, definitely does I'll take that. sound. <laughs> hand me the Gabelle definitely does sound like something somebody would say. Um, yeah. But maybe they're not uh, talking about a tool. Maybe they're talking about... Um, some weird Canadian dish that nobody outside of Canada even knows exists. And that's why we would never use it in our daily life because it's not like poutine where it's like delicious and, and uh, multicultural and something that other people can get behind on. It, it's, it's like roasted pig feet or something. Like something really horrible <laughs> that nobody wants. Like, like haggis. Like, you, I mean, I guess we know what haggis is because we know that it's horrible, but like maybe there's some obscure version of, ha I'm sure there's an obscure, obscure version of something haggis-like that, that nobody talks about except for the people within that culture. And, and they just don't, you, they, 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 it's such a horrible thing that it's like out of sight, out of mind. They just never even mention it. Are you familiar with Brunchweiger? Brunchweiger? Yeah, Brunchweiger. Brunchweiger. It's like a spreadable no. nope. meat? No. 
I, so, I, m usually, oh, I, usually that that sounds like pate. Yeah, this is like, I don't know, like growing this, up, like this was like a I'm sandwich sorry, the phrase, elementary school. I'm stuck on spreadable meat. That sounds. Oh yeah, I, I should finish explaining this because it, it is horrifying, and I think about it now. I'm like, what? When I was a kid, I used to take French white cream cheese sandwiches to school, and it was like this tube of meat oh. that somewhat resembled bologna, and you take it with a knife and spread it like butter, and then throw a piece of American cheese, which is clearly not cheese on, uh, on white bread. Um, and that was like one of my favorite sandwiches when I was in elementary school. Uh, and I'm Good horrified. You. I'm by glad it, it was one of your favorite sandwiches instead of it. Oh, like, I know. It was something I know. That you hated. <laughs> No, no, yeah, I know. I like. I would ask for it. Like, how, how did? Like that seems like right up a kid's alley. Like, I don't know, some weird sort of spreadable. <laughs> I had, I had. My dad made me salami sandwiches for for lunch, for years, mm. and eventually it got to the point where I had to say, I don't want any more salami sandwiches. I can't take any more salami sandwiches it just i can't sure. i just can't it's too many and this is me like i don't know 10 12 or something like dad no more salami please no more salami. You gotta mix it up <laughs> um yeah i i definitely remember having that conversation about bologna and then salami came in and then uh for a change of pace i had peanut butter and honey in the mix really good Still a big fan of peanut butter and honey. Not so mm -hmm. much bologna or brunch wagger or salami these days. Yeah, I still I still maintain that that peanut butter and jelly or peanut butter and honey uh, is is one of the greatest food combinations ever. Like that is a just a perfect mm. a perfect thing. Um. Yeah, and there's something about um, obviously like local honey <laughs> that it's it's different everywhere and. I, I, like, I know it's not true, but I like to think that, like, as you're eating this honey, you can sort of, like, taste the landscape because of the, the, where the pollinators have visited, right? And so that there's, like, the flavor is so influenced by, like, what you're smelling while you're eating it outside. I mean, I'm sure that uh, if you have a particularly discerning palate, that's not inaccurate. Uh, I ate brunch wagger, so I think we've established that I do not have that discerning power. I was gonna say, I mean, much <laughs> like much like people who have, much like people who taste coffee, and can tell, mm. like the difference between you know different varietals of coffee uh, that have even come from the same region. Um, I think that most people do not have refined palates uh to that extent but don't you think that's like something that i i mean i think to some extent you can be trained sure right yeah it's it's about I mean, there are some people that are tone deaf and cannot be musicians but is that true like they're tone deaf like what if you took time and really i mean just beat on music fundamentals like would that not they would never be Pavarotti, but i mean they could certainly pick out Hey, I'm not saying I mean, right I note. think that I think that there's probably some uh, biological things that might get in the way of that to a degree, but I generally Certainly. think that anybody can be anything if they practice. When I was in high school, this uh, this message brought to you by Banner Jazz, you too can be anything if you practice. It's super inspirational. Um, <laughs> it doesn't matter the shape of your ear or what's going on inside. You can figure out Even what Mozart are. was death. Well, that's all I got to say. <laughs> right, the Mozart so was, uh, Mozart lost his hearing, right? Uh, yeah. so Probably because he was banging thing. on the piano so hard. I mean, yeah, obviously. Yeah. Mozart was that's like, funny. Mozart like, that's like was Mozart's... the Renaissance equivalent of a death metal band. <laughs> yeah, Mozart's parents were like, keep playing on that piano, you're going to lose your hearing, right? <laughs> right. But, but I mean, that's like music. Like it, like somebody else's parents were like, keep making that face. Your face is going to freeze that way. And we don't know who that person is. Unless it's like an impressionist artist and their face really did look that way. And we're like, I, I'm going to say that person is oh. probably Steve Martin. But I mean, there's probably a lot of people that uh, maybe Jim Carrey. 
Oh man! Imagine if Jim Carrey's face like froze in any of the faces. <laughs> any, the any of them, any of them it's at painful. all. Painful. Um, I was in high school band, and uh, there was this trumpet player who was not, uh, who was just having issues. Like, couldn't hear. Like, was reading the music and couldn't figure out where things were going. Blah blah blah. And um, the brass instructor came up behind him, and like, put his forehead against the back of the kid's neck, and like, sang these notes, mm. um, like. And and suddenly it just clicked. It was like that physical like feeling, the frequency like mm. made it work. It was mm. I I was, I'm still stunned to this day. You know, twenty. What year did I graduate? I think more than twenty years ago. You're like, young, like eighty two. So <laughs> like sing the notes in the song. Uh, he sang the notes that he should be playing on the trumpet. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I'm gonna say it was like a fourth, right? And he just sang saying that and like suddenly this kid just had it locked in and knew like what to do with the rest of his body to make these frequencies come out whereas previously he was struggling trying to play this part and it was obvious because i mean it really yeah it was it was neat it was neat uh that brass instructor was fantastic he did a lot with uh like the actual creation music and you know i remember what like <laughs> remember one time he was like uh so you're all musicians, right? A painter. A painter's, uh, uh, what does a painter work on, you know? Like, they start with nothing. They start with white, you know? Like, what do we start with? And as musician, young musicians, you know, high school kids were like, uh. We're all sitting there, and he's like, that, exactly, silence. Like, that's, that's where everything starts from. So silence is, a, is part of your tool set. You don't have to always play, you know, as loud as you can, and you don't have to fill every second, you know? Mm. there's silence uh, and it was like you talked about the effectiveness of silence and music. i mean it was it was much more than like hear the notes on the page and play it was like a lot about like the the parts of music that are not you know wrote and you know the, the creative parts and the magic of the music that makes it universal anyway jason i don't know his last name seagull <laughs> Seagal. Jason Seagal went yeah. on to become a famous martial artist, which makes sense. Jason Seagal. I, uh, what was the word? Gabel. Gabel. Seagal. Seagal. Um, I, I just, I felt like I should uh, uh, hand wave fresh. at the yeah. yeah. Just um, over there. On that same note, I guess. On right. that Gabel. On that Gabel. So Allison introduced it as saying it is something that we will likely never use again. Correct. No. Yeah. Which I have a lot of tools I've used one time. Probably a lot of mine went to tools. Or I've used a second time for totally improper purpose. A gabelle is a tool that is used for ensuring that uh, know what the, it is. the corner of a room is a 90 degree angle. It's a little, it's a little wedge that is exactly ninety degrees, and you put it in in the corner of your room to make sure that it's ninety degrees. And now, of course, if you have a house like we do that is a hundred years old, this tool does you no good whatsoever because you'll go to a corner say, in the room and you'll put it there, and you're like, nope, not ninety degrees, and that's all you can do. That's it. We're done. First, that's all there is to do. That, that tool is called the speed square. Secondly, a speed square. <laughs> It because is. it's on speed or because it's fast? It's uh, it's fast. It has a whole, there's like a book that comes with it on how to use it, but there are like, there's a flat plate that kind of edges over. It's 90 degrees. There's spots where you can do like a quick uh, stroke if you're building. I mean, it's it's a very utilitarian tool. Secondly, I own one and it's a Swanson brand speed, speed square, which never ceases to crack me up because I can, oh, I just think of like Ron Swanson from Parks and Rec, like would know how to use this thing. Whereas I'm like, I need to do this thing and where the hell's the book? <laughs> so, uh, anyway, what the we're hell actually is a at the time? Yeah, we're actually <laughs> at the time where you can tell us what a gabelle is. It is. <laughs> you're gonna probably hate me for this. It's a very unpopular tax on salt in France. And okay, okay. And it ha has. It was established in like. Probably the Gabelle tax, obviously. The Gabelle tax, yes. Right. 
um, established during like the 1500s and has been off and on again, was finally eradicated during the French Revolution and then reinstated by Napoleon and then gotten rid of, but they finally got rid of it in 1945. And um, okay, and it's a big, it's a big, and it was at a consumer tax or a commercial. I'm really interested now. (laughs) It was originally an indirect tax that affected like farming communities, but then it was basically like all all over, so all French citizens. So basically, anything for preserving food, making cheese, livestock, like anything you need salt for. it was, was that like, now? And it basically made like huge disparities in salt prices across the country. Wow. He met, so like I'm wondering, you know, if you go to a restaurant and there's like uh, nowadays, I don't know, probably consumer protection laws, but nowadays like there's the items you purchased, and then if there's like an extra fee for whatever, it's a line item. Like I wonder if there was like a like a bell line item, or if it I was mean, just it, lumped into tax in general, or it was just like, hey, it's quantity of francs. I don't know. I do not know. So that's something. Generally, these topics are things that come out of that derive from your uh, non binary jazz life. Uh, They sort (laughs) of they sort of bubble up in your day to day. (laughs) um, And and then it's sort of as a recurring theme. And then you're like, Oh, I think I'll bring this to the to the to the show. Um, I'm very interested how Gabel (laughs) came up in your circle of influence uh, that it was uh, notable as a top subject for a topic? It was in a book I was reading okay. and it came up a few times and they referenced it as like, well, this is out, out as outlandish as Gabelle. And I was like, I don't know what that means. Like, how outlandish is it? Are you being sarcastic? That, that... I'm pretty sure it's the Sherlock Holmes book I'm, ring- I'm reading. It's not an actual Sherlock Holmes. It's um, somebody else writing Sherlock Holmes. But okay, I mean that's fair. That that works. Certainly, sounds like one of those things that that the author just threw in there because they were trying to be like. Sounds like they just knew it and then try, not, trying like, to be obscure. Like like, hey, I'm gonna throw this in there and and nobody's gonna know what I'm talking about. And I'm gonna, like, I'm so smart. Yeah, I'm so much smarter than my readers. Um, Cool, I think that's cool, a great cool, example, cool. though, of like how knowledge is, like, the, the potential power of the internet because like knowledge can't be constrained, right? Like, sure, maybe the, the writer threw that in as like a show off, like how smart I am with this obscure thing, but here we are, three random people, you know, in one hemisphere of the globe, like discussing it, uh, and that's like a wave that's made now, and so maybe that's. I our... also I did ask my sister-in-law who's from France. And I was just yeah. like, hey, like, is this a thing that, like, people know about, <laughs> obviously? And she was just yeah. like, oh, yeah, like, that's something we study. Like, it's definitely something that people know what, what it is. So if you are not American and yeah. likely French, then you might know what this is. But because yeah. we are not, then we have no clue. Uh, we actually sure. do have a listener question. Danette returns to our inboxes. Oh, welcome back. Hi, Danette. <laughs> awesome. Uh, Danette says, um, if you had to choose one pattern to commit to for life in addition to solid colors, would you go with stripes, polka dots, or florals? This question is brought to you by me listening to Tan France's book, him mentioning how he moved to Utah, him taking a strong position on how floral prints should become as evergreen as stripes or polka dots, and then me thinking, I think Chris just moved out of Utah. Um, So to correct that last (laughs) bit... Chris and Gary confusion. <laughs> yeah, Chris is still in Utah. Gary moved out of Florida to New to New Collins. What am I saying? <laughs> New Carolina. <laughs> New Carolina. Yeah, New Carolina is where, is where Gary's moved. Um, Chris is still in Utah, um, but has been talking about moving to uh, uh, British Columbia in some future scenario at some point. Um, now that we've gotten that squared away, because I feel like that's very important. Um, uh, stripes, polka dots, or florals? Open to the floor. I would uh, go with florals. Um, just, uh, I feel like there's a lot of flexibility with that, you know? 
seasonally it can change up. And, uh, I used to get picked on for wearing a Hawaiian shirt quite a bit from like all of my 20s. I knew you were that person. I had a hunch. I, yeah, I was not. That does not come as a surprise. I My my roommate in college, my first roommate in college was also uh, a, a Hawaiian shirt wearing person. So well, Before my last team trip, I went out and bought like a bunch of Hawaiian shirts so I could dress formally in the afternoon. After dinner, I would go back to my room and take the shorts and t-shirt off and shower and put on jeans and sandals and a Hawaiian shirt. The Hawaiian shirts I bought from a thrift store, brought back home. I bought them at the same thrift store, so I effectively rented them for a week. <laughs> I think I would choose stripes. I don't think that's a huge shocker. Um, yeah, I feel like I always like stripes. Uh, I think I would probably also go with stripes uh, because polka dots are too much and I don't think I could pull off florals. See, so, I was thinking polka dots, there's a lot of, like, you could go tiny, yeah, like, huge. I mean, I don't know, like, how huge, like, a single pot on your shirt if it would count as polka dots. <laughs> just one. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, it's like half a single. Yeah, um, no. But, you, but I mean, all over the place, which should be, uh, you know, I was also interested that this is the direction that the uh, that the question went, as opposed to like including things like uh, plaid. Plaid. When when I read the beginning and the pattern to commit to for life, I thought, oh, surely plaid is going to be one of the options. But plaid was not. Also, plaid is not something I could commit to for life either. <laughs> but what is plaid but stripes? <laughs> I'm sure. It's just different widths of stripes. And overlapping, yes. Yeah, so it kind of counts. <laughs> kind of, I suppose. If, if I mean, that would also uh, obviously offer some variety if we were in the stripes uh, clan. I'm gonna have to buy some plaid shirts. <laughs> not, not some plaid shirts. <laughs> Tell Rondo. No, right. You need some flannel. <laughs> you need some flannel in, North, in New Carolina. Yeah. 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 It's uh, it's actually. I mean, like I'm outside. And I not that this is an exception, but. I'm outside now, and it, it's, I'm actually wearing pants. I mean, no, wait, let me phrase that differently. I'm wearing long pants. <laughs> we knew, it's, it's most, right on the most edge. of us knew what you meant, Gary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, I mean, it's like right on the edge of, of, of coolness, you know, which to I, me being from Florida means like it's like 75. I would, that would be amazing if it was on the edge of coolness. Uh, it is not here. It has been like over a hundred um, pretty much every day of the week. We're in the, we're in the, oh God, I don't want to go outside part of summer right now. Oh, here's an interesting thing. In Florida, when it rained, right? It was just hot, humid rain. Here, when it yep. rains, like the temperature drops. Oh yeah. Which That's what, what happens in other places on? that aren't Florida. <laughs> Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at at binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the form on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.